Hello and welcome to today's video. So I've got a few real life things which are going to impact the YouTube channel just a little bit throughout the month of April and I want to just explain those before it happens just so you know what's coming up. Also I thought it would be a good time to take a look at what's coming up on the channel over the next sort of couple of months. So without further ado sit back relax and let's get to it. Okay then, so the first thing is, yes, I'm going to be changing jobs. So I'm staying with the same employer, but I'm doing a slightly different job. And that's going to involve a bit more training, probably at least a month of training. So during the training period, I'm going to be needing to be working full time, uh, which means I'm going to need to reduce my uh, overall YouTube output. So at the moment, I'm doing three videos a week on this channel and I do a video every Saturday on my sort of dedicated book cleaning channel. Plus I have other commitments during the week as well. So moving up to full time is going to mean I'm just not going to have the same amount of free time that I've got at the moment to make new videos. So what I'm proposing to do, I'm going to try and do, is just to do two sort of normal length videos a week. Try and do at least a shorter week, which I'm trying to do this year. And my Saturday video, I'm going to do my very best if I've got time to keep that one going. Um, so that's the current plan. It should only be for about a month's training, there or thereabouts. And then from May onwards, I'm then back to part time and that's permanent as well. So I'll be able to be doing my full quota of three videos a week on this channel, plus a short and one video on my other channel, which would be fantastic. So that's obviously the target. But during the month, tail end of March into April, I'm going to be struggling to fit all that in. So uh, expect my output to go down a bit and really just a couple of videos a week is perhaps all I'm going to be able to do. So as I said, I've got the next couple of months pretty well mapped out and there's an awful lot coming up, particularly in the next couple of weeks, which are going to be pretty manic in actual fact. So I'm filming this on the Saturday and I'm going to put it out the same day. But on Monday, I'm traveling to Dorset to view a huge science fiction um, collection, possibly the Chaps collection, but definitely his stock um, up in Dorset. So I'm traveling to that one with my friend Steve, the Outlaw Bookseller, and we've gone away and done these sorts of visits before. And I love sort of going on location, as it were. And there's going to be an awful lot of dedicated SO and some vintage paperback stock as well for me to film. Hopefully, I'll find a few bits to buy as well. So that's coming up on Monday. On Tuesday, um, I'm meeting up with my friend Andy, and we're going to be doing the second part of his vintage Jerry Anderson bubblegum card video. So um, we covered, you know, sort of up to the tail end of the 1960s. Um, so we got basically the 70s and beyond to cover this time around. There's going to be some good stuff in there, sort of UFO, Space 1999, and the sort of later series as well. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. I've also got two collectors fairs coming out. Now that's not this weekend, it's next weekend. And I'm planning to attend both of them. One's on the Saturday and one's on the Sunday. So on the Saturday, we've got the DevCon, which is more a sort of a science fiction convention. There are people in cosplay, but there's also dealers there. There's celebrity guests. So um, Julian Glover is, I think, the main star of this latest um, DevCon. Now I've met him before, I've got my uh, Star Wars figure to sign him. He's a really, really nice guy, but of course, more famous perhaps nowadays for his Game of Thrones appearances, but he's been in everything. You know, James Bond and What For Your Eyes Only, um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I uh, know oh Last Crusade, he was in Indiana Jones Last Crusade, but countless, countless things. I like him for The Empire Strikes Back, of course, but he's just been in everything. So he is the main guest of honour. So it'd be fantastic if I can catch a little bit of footage of him on film, as well as uh, filming the entire DevCon experience, because it's been going quite a while now, and it's a, a popular event. On the very next day is a brand new, they call it the Retro Toy and Train Show. And it's also going to include sort of retro video games, as well as the traditional toy and train sort of swap meet stuff. So it's going to be similar to uh, the West Point shows that I've been going in the Matford Centre recently in Exeter. But this one's right in my hometown at the, the Plymouth Life Centre. So both events I'm going to be attending. Both events I'm going to film and um, I'll do uh, videos on both of those, uh, you know, a few days after each event. So you can have a look and see what it was like. But um, I am excited to, uh, to squeeze two more shows in literally just uh, a week after doing Matford Toy Fair and Exeter. So fantastic there. I've got some book related content coming up. So I'm about to film this weekend my personal top 10 Agatha Christie and vintage paperback video. Now, this has been an agonizing choice, but I've managed to pull 10 plus a few honorable mentions together. So that one's coming up. I've got the second part of my um, uh, 
top 10 or top 20 rather uh, movie time paperbacks and that's once again been tough to pull the first 10 were extremely well received and I've pulled what I believe to be the next 10 best in my collection. I have also been thinking of doing a dedicated video of vintage Penguin uh, movie tie-ins and also vintage Pan movie tie-ins, just separate videos on both because um, maybe not so many in Penguin, but they have done some. Some of you might be surprised, so like Breakfast at Tiffany's, for example, but Pan did a lot more, particularly in the 50s and 60s, which I think would be of interest. So I think it'll be quite nice to pull all those uh, sort of tie-in books by that specific publisher together. That would be pretty cool. I will also be doing the next part of my Books About Books uh, video. So I've always loved collecting books about books and I've got quite a collection of them. The first one's gone out uh, this week with like seven larger format books about books, which I think has gone down very, very well. And I've got a, a bookcase full of them. So we're going to work my way slowly but surely through all those books. Many of them out of print now, but just fantastic to have a look at. I've even considered, and this is, you know, pipe in in the comments down below if you fancy this, but um, I have dug out my mum's vinyl collection. Now, my mum loved the 50s rock and rollers, people like Elvis, Billy Fury, Cliff Richard, the people who were big sort of in the late 50s, early 60s, the Everly Brothers. And um, she's got quite a, a collection of singles and EPs and LPs, which won't be fun to uh, get them out. I remember cleaning them for her back in the early 90s. I remember a huge run of like, Elvis EPs and that. So they would be pretty cool to look out. We could dig them up. We could even look them up on sort of eBay and see what they're maybe selling for. That might be quite cool. So if you're interested in a bit of vinyl record content, uh, do leave a comment down below. And that sort of brings me to the next bit. So we've been a bit lack on vintage Star Wars content of late. And now that's not on purpose, um, but I've been trying to find two particular pieces from my collection that I've just not been able to get hold of. One of them was the Land of the Jowers playset, and the other one was, I've got a French movie viewer that you put in a cartridge and um, you turn it and it actually plays about, I don't know, 12 minutes of the original movie. And I've been trying to find both of those to sort of film dedicated videos on, and I can't find them. I know I've got them, but I just can't put my hand on them. And I've been looking for about three months now. So basically enough is enough. So if you remember when I started this channel, which was four years ago now, four years at the end of March, um, I started digging out my Star Wars collection and it was basically all in boxes. And I do a video which had two or three boxes of old Star Wars stuff. And it was in a right mixture. What I'm thinking of doing, and basically I filmed it, and I did sort of put the carded figures to one side, so they are separate now. Um, but there's an awful lot that's still really completely unsorted. So I'm thinking I'm going to dig all that stuff back out again and sort it much more um, organised this time round. And I have a load of a brand new, sort of not purpose built, but you know, purpose uh, for the purpose of storing my Star Wars collection in a lot more um, ordered fashion, because at the moment it is a bit haphazard. So I'm going to go through the whole lot and I'm going to take my time going through it. And I'm going to uh, really talk about all those different pieces um, in detail. I've also dug out four boxes, four magazine boxes, and they weigh a ton, stuffed full of vintage Star Wars magazines, stuffed right back to the very first film. Um, I've got two and a half boxes on top of this of the original British comic, which I've never really shown. That's the large format one. I've gone through the American ones, but I've never shown all the British ones and the run of Return of the Jedi. So there's a lot of stuff there that's never been seen. Also, the larger Star Wars stuff, once again, I've never shown that. So I've got standees, I've got posters, I've got shop display um, stuff, which has all sort of been flat packed. And because it's so massive, really, I'm not sure how to display it. I'm going to have to like assemble it in the house and take the camera down and we'll film it that way but all of that sort of stuff and I've got a vintage Star Wars play mat that's never been shown so there's quite a bit that would be brilliant to get out because I can't remember exactly what I've got some of it's been packed away since the 90s so um that'll be pretty cool so fear not about vintage Star Wars there's definitely more coming up um, as soon as I get the time to film it so I mentioned my other channel just now so I've got a dedicated book cleaning channel which you may not even know about um it's called Unintentional ASMR, Book Cleaning and Repair. And uh, I put up a new video every Saturday and I've systematically been working my way through my 
vintage book collection. Now that's paperbacks, it's different publishers. Um, and I've recently started doing my large format books. That's annuals, big books about books, you know, really big tabloid stuff, uh, graphic novels, all sorts of things like that, which once again, a lot of that has never ever been shown on the channel before. So if you're interested in seeing that, see me clean it up, often in preparation for a dedicated video on the main channel here, uh, do go over and check that channel out and there'll be obviously links down below. Um, I've done the first two large format um, videos and um, well they've been going down really well and there's a lot of really interesting stuff in there that I think you'd like to see so do check that one out. Also I've not forgot my retro gaming fans so a lot of the content on my channel and the videos that get incredible views when I put new stuff up is dedicated retro gaming videos and my how-to guides so running the old emulators on your Android phone for example all of these are going to have 2023 updates over the next few months. Now, I realise this is not everyone's cup of tea, so I shall just slip these out. They won't be like the main video of the day. They are purely instructional ones. Um, but also, on the other hand, we are coming up to the Steam Deck's first anniversary. And I'm still a big fan of the Steam Deck, and that's had various updates to the emulators. And more systems are actually playable on the Steam Deck nowadays. So look for some Steam Deck content um, in the months to come, because I am planning to do quite a bit more of that as well. So in summary then, all that's stopping me is having the time to actually film it. So I've got stacks of plans. I've got the next, as I said, couple of months and slightly beyond that planned out. I've got all the major toy fairs uh, on the calendar. So I'm going to try and attend as many as I can. I'm going to be doing some book visits. And obviously I've got more collections that I want to go and film in people's homes. So there's quite a bit on the old agenda. All that's stopping me really is having the time to do it. So as I said, I've got, you know, most of April's blocked out now. I'm going to be working full time my output's going to drop a little bit. So, you know, it is what it is, but it's temporary. And, uh, you know, after that, it'll be all systems go. So I do have to give a special thanks to my Patreon and channel members because their contribution each month, even if it's a pound, and some of them are considerably more than that, um, it really does go a long way to helping out the channel and keep keep my revenue up so I can afford to be working part-time and YouTube as a part of my income as well. Um, it's a difficult thing and the YouTube income fluctuates and you know on a dime there could be a change in the algorithm and some of your views get hit and other videos don't get pushed out so much. YouTube is very much uh, pushing shorts at the moment and encouraging creators to make shorts but I've always preferred long form content and even if you get a short which does fantastic and gets tens of thousands of views you're not earning a lot of money out of that so you know it's a part of my sort of output and it will bring new people to the channel so i will continue doing shorts but um they're not going to be a major focus i like the long form content my viewers like the long form content some of them the longer the better so have no fear um, there won't be any sort of change to that regardless of what youtube is doing um on you know on the wider audience as it were the only thing i'd really like to do a bit more of is live streaming so once again I don't really feel that comfortable doing it on my own. It would be nice if I had someone perhaps sat next to me, so we had a guest, so there's a couple of us, or maybe a dual live stream, which we could both go on, and that's someone then moderating the comments. So if someone fancies doing that um, on my behalf or joining me and coming in on a live stream, just hit me up and uh, maybe we can fix something up because I think that would be quite a bit of fun. So anyway, there we are. I thought I'd update you all before this all starts to kick in because I've got an incredibly busy few weeks coming up now for the next couple of months, really. And um, things are going to be a bit manic, but thanks for sticking with me. Cannot tell you how much I appreciate all the support. It's fantastic. And I shall see you very soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.